I'm making a game where you manage your own dungeon and build your own minion army to defend your base from a party of adventurers. A few months ago, I realised my game has more problems than the government. Now I'm recreating it all from scratch, and this time, I'm thinking about what I'm doing. Stick around and you might just see something cool. For a quick catch up, last month I set up the basic navigation and combat within the rooms. I'm very happy with how it's turned out, but now there's no player interaction. You just hit play and oh my god, you won! <laughs> Since we stripped out the navigation agents from the heroes, we're going to need to find a new way of getting them around the rooms. And throwing away Sebastian Leg's path creator tool is it wasn't really suitable for what I'm wanting to do. If you want to make a simple path that has a bunch of curves and can loop around like a racetrack, then you can knock your socks off with this asset. But what I want is a sprawling network of nodes that the heroes can move between and can offer multiple paths and the ability to have more control on what ones can be used and everything. My first plan was to mimic something like a double linked list where you have a node holding data and a pointer to the next or previous node. But in this case, the connecting nodes could be flexible. But then I was getting a bit swamped with the idea of how that might be a little inefficient of having to search the nodes all the time and thinking how the heroes would do their own pathfinding to areas in the map. But then I was like, why are these heroes so smart? When they enter a dungeon, why do they know where the boss room is? Why do they know where the treasures are? Why don't we just make them really dumb. I've drawn an example map of a dungeon to explain my point. So now the dungeon is made up of loads of little nodes and edges between the nodes and the path is any intersection to any other intersection. Let's say the enemy enters here and then you've got the boss room here. So one path would be from here down to this point. One might be from here to this point. One might be here round to that point or here just straight on to that point. It's basically just a whole list of nodes and a whole list of those lists of nodes and the player whenever it goes to an intersection it decides oh should I go this way or that way I don't know I'm just gonna choose. To test this I made a traversal script and a dummy hero that gave it only one sole function. Walk from the start of the path to the end. When it gets to the end of the path, it will see that if that end node is connected to any other path ends. If not, then the hero will just go back, but if it is, then the hero will choose randomly which path to go down next. With all of this, add a bunch of them and you've got the heroes exploring the whole dungeon like a bunch of ants. I admit, I'm missing the path creator tool right now. Not because I'm regretting my decision of my own custom made path system. But because with the path creator system, all I had to do was add one script and then a whole path mesh appears. Now I gotta write my own script, and anyone who's ever tried making a mesh at runtime in Unity will believe me when I say, it's no bueno. Not only do you have to calculate mathematically where each vertex point is in 3D coordinates, but you have to draw those faces in a very particular order so that they don't end up being drawn upside down. After a couple of evenings, I was able to get this path, except for this singular face here. One day, I'll come back for you. There were two things I wanted to do. Dungeon Traversal and Minion Placement, and I'm all out of Dungeon Traversal. But before we do Minion Placement, we need a method for Minion Selection. In the previous version, I had a deck of minions that I could use to select and place. And though my goal for this prototype is to focus mostly on the gameplay and not the visuals, I kinda went on a bit of a detour with this. You see, I recently bought the Dot Tween Asset Pack a few months ago and have been wanting to try it out. And I remember the way I did these card movements last time were quite inefficient, so I thought maybe I should give Dot Tween a go this time. Long story short, it was absolutely worth it. Let me introduce you to the card deck. This bad boy sorts the cards all nice and neatly in one, and it gives you a nice little interaction when you hover over one. Of course you can do this really quickly and get a little Mexican wave going, which is pretty cool. And when you select a card, it raises from the deck while the rest of the cards hide a bit from view. If you add a bunch of cards, then the card deck will shorten the distance between each card so that they can all fit into the same space. There's also a sorting order that gets changed every time your cursor goes over a card, so that you're able to see the card that you want, and won't come across cards being hidden behind the pack. Honestly, I'm so proud of how this one turned out, and it's a lot nicer to interact with. Plus I've programmed it pretty modulely, so say in the future if I want to add a different deck, like for the traps, 
I can just do that without much more programming. Now that the card deck was in place, the minion placement wasn't hard to recreate. When you click on a card, you can then select a place on the map to place said minion. It follows some similar rules to last time in that you can only place a certain amount of minions in one room. For example here, it's set to 5, so I can't place any more in this room. I didn't bring back the drag and drop functionality, as it didn't really seem beneficial anymore, and I thought it would probably fit more with the next thing I've changed. Each card at the moment is a one-time use, so when you use a card, you can't use it anymore. It would probably fit the card theme of the game more, but I likely won't do it this way in the future. And that's all for now. If you've liked this video, then please like and subscribe. I know this video was like mm, two months late, but I had a very busy life, and my motivation for this video was kind of just going up and down. It was never really sort of steady enough. But I'm here now, and hopefully it won't be too long until I'm here again. So until then, keep doing whatever you're doing, as long as it's not illegal. Okay, bye!